Shor's quantum factoring algorithm came as a bit of a shock to people working in the crypto community. So, you know, imagine um, all those uh, mathematicians, computer scientists, cryptologists um, working on the security of public key crypto systems, being happy with the um, mathematical part of that, and they wake up one day to learn that, oh, yeah, those are quantum physicists are playing with it, and apparently they found a way um, to break the system. So. For one thing, that forces you to learn quantum physics, just to have a better understanding and, and the context where things can go wrong when it comes to uh, public key crypto systems. So <laughs> let me let me tell you briefly uh, how public key crypto systems work. I'm I'm actually going to focus on only one of them, RSA, one of the most popular one, named after um, Rivest, Shamir, Elderman, the three guys who came up with this idea. Now, remember, we talk about uh, the key distribution problem. We talk about Alice and Bob in two different locations. They want to have a random sequence of numbers that are identical and secret, and the problem is how, how to do it. Well, one way to do it is, is uh, to avoid the key distribution problem. And, <laughs> and so here is a, a simple idea that, uh, quote, simple, unquote, but, um, but uh, a very interesting and very clever idea uh, that uh, that is based on computational complexity. I mean, the security of which is based on computational complexity. So the idea is roughly as follows. So imagine Bob, who is in business of producing safe boxes. I'm going to give you some kind of a mechanical analogy first, and then we will go into a few mathematical details. So Bob is producing those safe boxes that have two keyholes, and there are two keys the thing is that the one key will lock the box and another key will unlock the box. So when you just have your box open, you can put something inside, you can put the lid down, lock it with the locking key that is also known as the public key and the box is locked. So the safe box is locked and you cannot unlock it with the public key. You have to use another key, the private key for unlocking the box. So now Bob is going to produce many of those mechanical boxes and will distribute it to everyone who might possibly want to communicate with him. And uh, you get the box and uh, if you are one of the recipients of Bob's uh, safe boxes, you get the box, it's open and there's a public key, the locking key that is attached to this box. So here we are, Alice is, is one of the recipients of, of those save boxes and Alice wants to send a message to Bob. So what she's going to do, she's going to write a message, she's going to put the message inside the box, put the lid down, so close the lid and lock the box with a locking key, with a public key. So at this point if Alice made some kind of mistake, if she wrote something that she didn't want to write, that's, that's just too late. She cannot just open the box because the public key, once you lock the message, you lock in, in the box, you, you lock the box, is not good for opening the box. So then you just send the safe box all the way to Bob. Bob gets the safe box and will take his private key that he keeps always in his location and it's, it's, it's a very precious thing and Bob will just open the box and read the message. Now, of course, you know, in this mechanical analogy here, those, uh, those keys are not completely unrelated to each other. So in the business of producing all those boxes, um, when the pair of keys is generated, the public key and the private key, uh, surely there is a, a relations between the two of them. So the question is, can Alice or anyone else who knows uh, the public key, who knows how the system works, can this person figure out the private key? So the answer is, well, yeah, in principle you can do it, but it's difficult. It's difficult in terms of computational power. There is not a good, efficient algorithm to do it, and in fact, for RSA, it all boils down to the ability of factoring large integers. So now, of course, you know, this mechanical analogy is now translated into um, 
some nice mathematics. So it, roughly it goes like this. So Bob, in his construction of this mathematical safe boxes, um, Bob will pick up uh, two large prime numbers. So we are talking about uh, those being of the order of a uh, thousand of bits, right? So we want to operate with n of the order of something like uh, 20, 48 bits or so. So pick up two prime numbers and uh, multiply them together, get some number n. One, one mathematical entity here that, that is uh, interesting and useful is, is what is known as Euler's Totian function or Euler's phi function. So that is uh, a function that uh, counts the number of integers which are smaller than n, capital N, and which are co-prime with n. So we are talking about, uh, if you think about, we, we mentioned this group, z n star, which is uh, the group of uh, all integers which are smaller than n uh, and which are co-prime with n. So we know that uh, this is a group, multiplicative group, modulo n, and the reason they have to become prime, those elements of the group have to become co-prime with n is simply because otherwise we cannot always construct the inverses in the group. So the Euler's phi function, phi of n gives you the number of elements in, in this particular group or the number of uh, uh, elements which are co-prime with, with n. What Bob is um, going to do after picking up the two prime numbers, getting the product of the two, which is n, uh, Bob, of course, then can figure out what is the the Euler's phi function. So this is known because he knows uh, p and q, and as it happens for, for, for this, the Euler's phi function is equal to p minus 1 times q minus 1. And then um, there's another piece of mathematics here where uh, Bob is going to pick up two numbers, e and d, which are inverses with respect to each other. They are co-prime with phi of n, and you can you can pick such two numbers. You can pick e and find the inverse mod phi of n. Um, this pretty efficient extended Euclidean uh, algorithm that does it for you. So those are things that can be easily done. And uh, if you are fluent in number theory, then then it's, it's it's not a big deal. One extra piece of mathematics that you should know about is it's called it's something called Euler's theorem. So if you it turns out that if you pick up a number which is smaller than this number n here and uh, co-prime with n, if you raise it to power phi of n, so to Euler's uh, phi function, then um, this is equal to identity to 1 mod n. It's not, if, if you know a little bit of a group theory, it's, it's, it's actually not difficult to see it, it's just simply you pick up this number p and you start raising it to different powers. You square it, you take the cube of it. You know, you're operating with this group of zn star. So when you keep on doing this, um, at some point you will just come back to the identity because you generate a subgroup of uh, zn star. And uh, if you keep on doing it uh, many times, uh, then of course, the order of the subgroup is uh, divides uh, the order of the group. So you can actually see that uh, you know, doing this a few more times, you'll be actually getting heating the, the one every now and then. And uh, so surely um, this element of the group raised to the order of the group, so the number of to, to this value here, gives you the identity. Um, this is a hand-waving explanation, but uh, if you think a little bit about it, you, I'm sure you'll figure this out. So now Bob then has the following. He has, he knows p, he knows q, he knows number n, he knows phi of n, and he constructed uh, those two numbers e and d. And he's going to announce to everyone number n and e. What he's not going to reveal is this number d, which is the inverse of e mod phi of n. So we can say that the pair n d forms the private key 
and n e is the public key of course n is known and n is public so what is really secret here um is is d and then of course there's the composition into uh, p and q <coughs> so now the the way then encryption works is that alice is going to divide uh, her message which can be treated as a sequence of numbers um, into small chunks into small blocks um, so that each number is, is less than n and uh, so she takes this block say it's p for plain text and the encryption will in encryption method will just work uh, as follows so you raise it to power e mod n and this is your cryptogram so she will just take p raised to power e mod n when she does it you know if you if you change the value of p then then um, this cryptogram will be just all over the place so this uh, is uh, it's very difficult knowing just c and and, and uh, knowing e to figure out what the what the p is now you can see that uh, this cryptogram then in being in transit to to bob is decrypted by taking the cryptogram raising it to the power d so decrypting exponent mod n that will give you the the plain text so the reason that it works is uh, simply if you if you just if you just look at this expression here so you can see that uh, c raised to power d mod n is equal let me just substitute this expression for for c so we have p raised to power e times d mod n and we know that uh, we know that the way it was constructed the whole thing here is equal to p um, so for ed i can just we know that it's equal to one mod phi of n so it's some in the exponent you have some multiple of phi of n plus one right so that's that's this one here so that is equal to um you know this this part p k phi of n times so time p so this part here is equal to one mod n so essentially you are done you are left with p so that's that's so that that thing is due to this Euler's theorem here so it's all mod n of course so that's that's how it works now um, you can see that uh, this is a, a good encryption method so this is a good uh, way of decrypting um, now the reason of course why it's difficult to break this uh, is because anyone who would like to break this system here of course everyone knows n and everyone knows e that's 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 the public key um, you would like to figure out what is the inverse of e um, mod phi of n so for this you need to know phi of n and um, so in order to find out uh, so you in order to find out phi of n in this case knowing that n is the composite of it's some val some prime number p times some prime number q uh, you know that this is equal to p minus one, q minus one. So once you know this, you can you can find this inverse. Uh, but but the first you know we have to find phi uh, of n, and in order to find phi of n, you have to find the decomposition into uh, the prime factors p and q of n. So this is difficult. Now once you make it easy, you break RSA. So that's why it was such a big deal. But it's beautiful, right? So the um, the whole um, edifice of public key crypto systems is a beautiful piece of mathematics. So you have to think a little bit about uh, what I wrote here, but it's not it's really not a rocket science. Now, a real challenge now for people in this field is to find similar public key crypto systems which are immune to quantum attack. So some beautiful piece of mathematics that uh, you can give it to people working in uh, crypto business to our spooks and tell them look um, 
quantum computers cannot break this. They can break RSA, but they cannot break this. And whatever this is, you know, it's a big question now. NSA has a uh, call for proposals. Um, you, you may be a bit too late because they shortlisted a few proposals by now. But there is this public debate. What would be the best quantum resistant quantum uh, public key crypto system which is immune to quantum attacks some people call it post-quantum um, public key crypto system so purely classical nice piece of mathematics but show that this is actually immune to quantum attack it might be very difficult to prove it you know we don't know for example whether factoring is inherently difficult for classical computers we know that quantum computers can handle it but it's not proven that classical computers cannot handle it. So th it may well be that there is efficient classical algorithm for factoring, but we just simply don't know. We cannot find it. People tried very hard. So we may end up in a similar situation with um, post-quantum version of, uh, of, of public key crypto system that we may just make a claim that most likely will be difficult even for quantum computers to um, to tackle those kind of problems. And, you know, there is a, and there are many areas, beautiful areas of mathematics, like a lattice theory, for example, which uh, lends itself to public key crypto systems of this type. So here's a challenge for you. Just design a crypto system that uh, is immune to quantum attacks.